Hello students. In this lecture we're going to learn about human evolution and kind of answer that question, where did we come from? So there are lots of different stories or proposals about where the diversity of life came from. For example, among the, the Greeks and within Japanese and even in Hinduism you find this hint to this cosmic egg story where all of life burst forth from this giant cosmic egg and that's where life began. But you know, as we think about these stories, these creation stories, we also from a scientific standpoint, from a biological standpoint, need to ask the question that we have taught you about the nature of science. Are these types of proposals testable? I mean, how could we test these types of creative, creative stories? Furthermore, there are other types of creative stories that talk about a primordial pair. For example, Tiamat and Marduk, or the coyote and the raven, or, or even Adam and Eve. Are any of these stories testable? How might we test them? And if they're not testable, why are they not testable? So we should start to think back on some of those lessons that we learned about the nature of science and what, what makes something scientific, what makes something testable, and what doesn't make something testable. So clearly, these things are not testable. Um, so um, there, there is a survey that has gone around for, uh, for a number of years, and I want to just quickly have you guys look at this and choose where you might fall on this. So which comes closer to your view? Humans and other things have evolved over time. Humans and other things have existed in their present form since creation, or other, or don't know or refuse. So this is a really common poll that they've asked for a number of years here in the United States, and here are the data from 2011. 57% of North Americans said that humans and other living things have evolved over time. 38% said that they have existed in their present form since creation. And then there's you know 5% in these other categories. So clearly this is still a subject where there is um, some confusion and there's um, people in on one side thinking one thing and people on another side thinking another thing. And maybe you'll, you know, you can put yourself in one of these categories based on how you answered that question. Because those original creation stories are not testable, um, we can ask ourselves, is there a testable hypothesis? And there is a human evolution testable hypothesis. And Darwin was among the first to propose that humans share biological and genetic ancestry with other forms of life. And he even proposed that our closest living relatives are the great apes. And, and that we, in essence, share common ancestry with these other extant or living great apes. Now, this is a testable hypothesis, right? And so what we're going to do now is kind of look at what are some of the evidences that we can come up with that can support the hypothesis of humans evolving from a common ancestry with the other great apes. So some of the evidences that we have are things like the fossil record, where there's this rich fossil record of hominid um, species. And we're going to actually look at, at more closely at that in our apply exercise. But there's a, there is an enormous amount of fossil record that actually supports these transitions from more chimp-like to more human-like. Um, individual or a species with ultimately ending up with a with a homo sapien type species. So we'll examine that in a in a different activity. But there's also a more a multitude of morphological evidence and for this what we want to do is actually just compare chimpanzee and and humans and look at those two morphologies and see what types of evidences are present both from what is similar but then also what are the differences and that way we can also get a a good feel on what are the types of transitions that one would expect going from a more chimpanzee like ancestor or more ape like ancestor to then more human like okay so we're going to compare these uh, skulls of uh, chimpanzee and a human so I've got both skulls here. Uh, the jaws are down on my table still, but we'll look at those. So what differences do you see, or what similarities? Well, first of all, you know, they're both mammals and have lots and lots of similar features, but let's concentrate on some of the differences right now. So one thing that we can see is that chimpanzee skulls have a brow ridge that is very pronounced, whereas Homo sapiens don't, right? Now, we still have a brow ridge, but it it is not very pronounced because the forehead comes directly up from the brow ridge. So the cranium um, 
case sits right on top of the brow ridge. And of course that you can see immediately too that the cranium size is much larger in humans. Um, we can also notice that chimpanzees have very large cheekbones so that these muscles can go through and then insert up here on top of the head. In fact, it goes all the way up to the very top of the head so they have this little bone mohawk called the mid-sagittal crest. Humans don't have that. Our muscles insert up about to about right here. You can actually see where it's still kind of rough here on the skull. Um, the faces. Chimpanzees have this muzzle. They're, they're, they're um, mandibles stick out and if like they were walking you know that would hit first in the wall whereas in humans we have a flat face and the nose would hit first. Chimpanzees have their incisors that point outwards. Humans incisors point more down. Chimpanzees have large canines. Humans don't have large canines. Um, we have small cheek teeth. The chimpanzees have a rectangular jaw. We have a more rounded jaw. The hole in the bottom of the skull here is called the foramen magnum and that's where the spinal cord goes through. And if you actually look at the angle of insertion, so I'm going to take this pencil and insert it in the angle in which the spinal cord would come. So you can kind of see that, that that's the angle in which it would come. Right, like that. It's like this, and so that's why their head hangs kind of down like this. Whereas ours, if we take a look at the hole here and do the angle, it would be like that. So our head hangs straight up and down. So these are some of the differences that we can see between chimpanzees and humans. We can also look at their lower jaws and see a few more differences as well. So here's the lower jaws. Again, large canines. Notice this is not is more rectangular shaped and this is more rounded and getting wider at the, at the ends. Chimpanzees have a very thickened bone area right below here called the simian arch area. Comes across here and humans don't have that thickened right here. Rather, we have thickening on the outside where we have a chin. And Homo sapiens are the only hominids to have a chin. So these are some of the differences. There's many others you can look at as well, but here that's a, a, a brief summary into some of the differences between chimpanzees and, and humans. Okay, so we've looked at the, the morphological evidences now. So now we can talk about cultural artifacts. So what are these? Well, cultural artifacts are evidences left behind of the culture of the, of the population or species that we're looking at. And in this case, what we're interested in is kind of the technologies that happen. Now there's lots of things we could look at in human evolution technology advances. But we're going to concentrate mostly on some things like maybe weaponry or, or other types of of things that humans did to, um, to have a culture and to share a culture. So what I want you to do is look at all of these different objects here in, the, in, in, in these images and just quickly kind of say, okay, what do you think is the earliest? So what was the, I'm sorry, what was the oldest of these? Which of these is the oldest in time? And then kind of work your way going to youngest, right? You can kind of quickly look through those and make a decision. You might even pause the video right now and make a few decisions on that. But I'm going to move forward and just show that this is the way that these kind of work out in a from an oldest to a youngest. It's like this, where you have the things like these very um, these scrapers that were used, where it's just kind of a rock that was picked up and had an edge that was kind of sharp, and then these were used to scrape meat off of bones and to do other types of simple tool um, uh, skills. And um, this is present in some of the uh, early members of the genus Homo, like Homo habilis, for example, would use these very simple tools. Later on, the tools started to become chipped away and you would get a sharper and sharper edge until eventually you'd, you get to things like this bifaced point here where, uh, you know, it's so sharp that you can even just kind of see the light coming through here. These are very much more sophisticated. You get points and then eventually barb technology. And down here I'm showing some of the technology that comes about where they start to collect shells, drill holes through the shells and then obviously you're hanging these on like a necklace. right? So you get ornamentation as a culture. Eventually you start to have um, species that are putting their their mark on walls some way. It started off with like hands but eventually became you know drawings of, of you know the animals that lived around them or, or even some way maybe to present some of their story. And then you know even some of the fishing technology where they're making hooks to go fishing is even present um, 
you know, as part of our culture. So the cultural artifacts follow this very nice transition from much more simple to very complex. And it's exactly what we would expect to find if there's evidence to support the human evolution hypothesis. So the last piece of evidence that I'm going to quickly talk about is called genetics and phylogeny. So to demonstrate how genetics supports the relationships of humans to other great apes and, and that the human evolution hypothesis is a well-supported hypothesis, I'm going to show how we can quickly do this. So what I've done is I've gone and I've gathered DNA sequences from human, chimpanzee, bonobo, gorilla, orangutan, and then even some of the extinct homo species. For example, Homo neanderthalensis and the Denisovans. And so these are, these are organisms that have gone, been extinct for more than 30,000 years, but by going into their bones, we're actually able to get out some biological cells there that still had DNA and then sequence their DNA. So what I'm showing here is a, um, let me stretch this out. So what I'm showing here is the sequences for these organisms. And so you can see the A's, C's, T's, and G's. And what I'm going to do is copy all of this and paste it into this website here, um, this phylogeny.fr website, which is a, an online resource to make um, phylogeny trees. So I'm going to paste in all of those sequences. I'm going to unclick this G box thing so it just gets done quicker, and then push Submit. Okay, I'm going to let that run. Now, once that gets done, it'll run through aligning all the data. Then it will start to search for the best trees. As we learned before, there's trees that are better than other trees. It'll look for the best tree, and then it'll draw the tree for us. Okay, so I have already uh, gone to the finish point here. So here we can see the alignment of the sequences. So that's like the more, follow, you know, when we've been doing matrices, this is the matrix. And finally then we can go to the tree. And so this is the image, right, the representation of all of that data showing the relationships here. So what we see is that orangutan here, of course, is the least, um, is like the outgroup of the rest of these organisms. And we see that humans share a most recent common ancestor with Neanderthals and Denisovans, with these other extant species, hominid species from the genus Homo. And then the genus Homo shares a most recent common ancestor with the chimpanzees, right? But clearly humans are related to the other great apes. And this is based on just a small piece of DNA. If, if we do this for the entire genomes, which we do have for all of these organisms, the same story comes out where humans are most closely related to humans and to Neanderthals and Denisovans and then to chimpanzees. So what's interesting is, for example, humans are more closely related to chimpanzees than they are to gorillas. And chimpanzees are more closely related to humans than they are to gorillas, right? So this is the type of evidence that we can also look at that clearly supports the the human evolution hypothesis over any of the other hypotheses that have been proposed or any of the other creation stories. This seems to be the best explanation for both the diversity of life and for the origination of Homo sapiens on this planet.